finally married the Dundee murders, the horrifying tale of the murders of a mother and her innocent daughter. Social media has changed our lives. It has reduced the distances between two opposite worlds and has brought people closer to each other in the last decade. Dating websites and applications have changed our outlook on conventional dating. With just a swipe, you can check your compatibility and find the best partner for you. But what if your perceptions get wrong? What if the stranger on the other side of the screen is not the way you think? Today's case revolves around one such incident where a woman who was in hope of a better future eventually became a victim of a horrific crime. Welcome to AF Crime, the channel that brings you fascinating crimes all around the world. If you're interested in this kind of content, this channel is for you. Make sure to like this video, click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to keep you updated on our recent uploads. Now, let's get right into the video and investigate more about the Dundee murders where a woman lost her life with her young child in a horrendous way. It was a fine spring day in 2021, and 25-year-old Benny Lynn Burke was feeling the warmth of the day as her heart was full of peace and joy. She was finally moving forward with her life, and she wanted to share this news with everyone in her family, but she was far, far away from her loved ones. Benny Lynn originally belonged to the Philippines, where her family had been living, but she had moved out to the UK recently in search of a better future. It had been 18 months since she had come to this new country where she was trying to settle down. She chose Bristol as the city where she wanted to turn her dreams into reality. She knew that she had to work hard to make herself settle in a new city and an alien country. She had seen poverty very closely during her childhood and had started working from a very young age to support her family. Benny Lynn knew that she could never help her family while staying in the Philippines, so she started making our efforts to escape. For this purpose, she had initially joined a dating website where she met an old landlord named Lexington Burke, who was affluent but was a mid-aged guy in his late 40s belonging to the UK. Benny Lynn knew that this was once in a lifetime opportunity to change her life forever. Lexington was in the Philippines for a short while, so Benny Lynn decided to move forward with the relationship, and they started seeing each other. After months of courtship, the couple finally married each other in July 2018 in her hometown, Samar. It was a simple yet memorable marriage for both. Following July, the couple's first daughter, Jalixa, was born in August, and this was the time when both of them decided to move back to the UK. Benny Lynn wasn't happy to leave her family behind, but she knew that now she had another responsibility. Her daughter was her entire world, and she wanted to give her the best life. So, both she and her husband moved back to the United Kingdom in 2019, shortly before the first birthday of her daughter in August. However, as the couple moved to the United Kingdom, there was something visibly different in Lexington's behavior now. He used to get angry over trivial issues and domestic fights became more common among the couple. It seemed that Lexington no longer wanted to live with Benny Lynn and wasn't even interested in taking care of her daughter, Jellica. So, after mutual agreement, both of them decided to call it quits. They ended their relationship in the last part of 2021. Yet, this was the phase that changed young Benny Lynn. She was now left alone with a daughter who needed good care, so Benny Lynn finally moved to her flat which was located in Kingswood. Benny Lynn felt a strange relief after getting into her own home along with her daughter. She knew that she had to work hard if she wanted to meet the ends alongside financially helping her family back home. So she started in a care home as a salesperson. This met both her and her daughter's needs. She also used to save some bucks for sending to her family. And finally, things started looking clear to her. Benny Lynn was now financially standing up on her feet, but her failed marriage had impacted her mind a lot. So now she was taking time to start a relationship. During the lockdown, she joined a dating site named Filipino Cupid. She intended to find someone of the same ethnicity as her, but eventually she came across 52-year-old Andrew Ennis. Andrew was a computer gaming engineer and attended Aberdeen University. He belonged to Dundee, Scotland. Andrew told Benny Lynn that he had joined the platform a few months ago when he broke up with his Japanese wife and children. He further clarified that he had been to Japan for some time and that's where he had met his estranged wife. 
However, when their marriage ended, he was deported back to England. Of course, this was a bit too much to process for Benny. But then he thought about her life. She was no different from Andrew, who was betrayed by someone he had loved deeply. So she thought about giving love another chance and they started a relationship. Benny Lynn wanted to share this news with her parents, but as she was sitting miles away from them, she was unable to do so. So she talked to her sister Shella, who was her best friend. Both sisters used to share every single detail of their lives. Benny Lynn told Shella that once again, she was considering the potential prospect of getting remarried to a man named Andrew. Shella saw the happiness on her face, which sparkled brightly in her eyes, so she thought that the guy might be a special. She encouraged Benny Lynn to forget the past and think about a bright future with Andrew. During this time, Andrew had tried to persuade her to leave Bristol and move to Dundee. He also offered her a job worth a thousand dollars per month, where she was supposed to work as a community relations manager. But Benny Lynn refused on the account that she had already started a life in Bristol and she was happy in this city, so she didn't want to move out. Though she agreed to do the job remotely from Bristol as she knew that she couldn't afford to lose a potential work opportunity. As their relationship progressed, Benny Lynn felt that Andrew was becoming more demanding as he demanded her nude photos, which she rejected because she couldn't bring herself to do so. Finally, Andrew requested her to come with him to Dundee for a day so they could go sightseeing and spend more time together. This idea seemed nice to Benny Lynn as she wanted to know more about Andrew before making it official. So she agreed. It was decided that he would come to pick her up and her daughter Jellica on the 18th of February and they would spend a day together. So finally, that day approached. Benny Lynn met Andrew in person for the first time. He was a bald guy whose shoulders seemed haggard and was tall in appearance. Shella saw that Andrew was not alone in the car. Apart from Benny Lynn and Jellica, another girl was sitting in the passenger seat who seemed to be in her adolescent years. Andrew told Benny Lynn that she was his daughter. Benny Lynn understood that maybe he was trying to bond with her daughter through this trip. As Shella talked to Andrew, she felt that he was a nice person who could keep her sister happy. Both of them joked as well. Finally, they reached Andrew's home and it was decided that they will be spending the next few days sightseeing the important locations of Dundee, like the v &A Museum and Camperdown Park. During this time, Benny Lynn also talked to Shella as she told her that Andrew had shown her his entire house and a veranda that was all white. She seemed satisfied, so Shella ended the call. But that's exactly when the situation started turning grave. By the 20th of February, Benny Lynn had stopped answering messages of Shella, which was a rare occurrence. Shella knew that her sister never ignored her messages, no matter wherever she was. So she guessed that something was not right. She messaged Andrew on his messenger, where she demanded to know about Benny Lynn and Jellica. At this, Andrew told her that there was nothing to worry about as she was with another man in Glasgow whom she had met online, and he was a teacher. This was a new revelation to Shella as she had not previously heard from Benny Lynn that she was seeing someone else other than Andrew. When she tried to inquire further about it, Andrew told her that she was seeing another man other than him. And now she was with him because Benny Lynn's ex-husband Lexington was filing a custody case against her for seeking the custody of his daughter. So when she asked for a suggestion from him, he advised him to go to the second man for some time and turn her phone off because if she didn't, it will become easier for her husband to trace her whereabouts and take her daughter from her. She is also thinking about starting a new life in Glasgow. All of this seemed unbelievable to Shella, but she accepted whatever Andrew said because at the moment, he was her only source of finding out about her sister. After two more days had passed like this, she once again asked Andrew about her. But this time, she became very clear and asked whether she was alive or not because last night their brother had received a premonition about Benny Lynn's Angelica's death. Now the family was growing impatient. 
At this, Andrew pacified her and told her that there was no reason to worry as Scotland was a very safe country. Then after a week, Andrew informed her that Benny Lynn was settling into her new routine quite well. However, by now, all of that seemed fake to Shella. Shella knew something was wrong and Andrew was not telling her the truth. So she demanded a video of her sister. Conveniently, Andrew sent her an old video and said that someday they can meet and chat again as the dust gets settled down. These words seemed strange to Shella, but at the moment, her top priority was the well-being of her sister. So she became silent after receiving the video. On the 1st of March, 2021, the disappearance of Benny Lynn and Jellica was officially reported when they missed an appointment. The family was informed about this. Two weeks later had passed and there was still no sign of Benny Lynn and Jellica, which had never happened before. The Bristol police became active and they found CCTV footage where Andrew could be seen near Benny Lynn's residence in a supermarket from where he buys a hammer. There's also a car being noticed that drives from Dundee to Bristol and then back again in Dundee, which could be seen near the residence of Benny Lynn. Dundee police were informed about this discovery and soon they started searching for the car and found it in Andrew's driveway. The officers knocked at his door. Upon finding him at the door, they inquired about Benny Lynn and Jellica. Andrew accepted that he had picked them up from Bristol, but he also clarified that now they were in Glasgow. At this, the police inquired him about their whereabouts in Glasgow, and he failed to answer. As the police tried to enter his house to search for the evidence, he refused to let them in with the account that his daughter was taking a bath inside. Nonetheless, when police entered inside, they found a girl sitting on a couch in her normal clothes. After inquiring from the girl, they found that she wasn't Andrew's daughter. Inside the house, everything was disordered, and it seemed that there had been a great disaster inside. The pots and pans were all placed on the staircase, and the kitchen units were torn apart. All this left no room for mercy for Andrew, and he was strictly questioned about Benny Lynn. He broke down and confessed that he had murdered both Benny Lynn and Angelica in a fit of rage. He also revealed that both of them were buried two or three feet down under the kitchen unit. When the police recovered the bodies under the concrete, they were horrified to see that there were sharp stabbing marks and injuries all over Benny Lynn's body. Angelica's neck had a mark indicating strangulation. Both the bodies were sent for forensic testing, which revealed that Benny Lynn was stabbed first and then beaten to death with a hammer. A bone-chilling revelation was that Jellica was not just strangled, but before strangulation, Andrew had sexually assaulted the baby, which brought the attention of the police to the second girl, who was recovered from Andrew's house. After her medical examination, it was proven that she had been raped several times by Andrew in the past few days. Detective Chief Inspector Graham Smith who was looking into the case revealed that police had luckily saved the life of the second girl that day when they entered Andrew's house. Right after these horrific revelations, Andrew was arrested on the 5th of March from his house and the Graham Smith informed Benny Lynn's family about that. They were heartbroken over this. After two years, a trial ran for five days and on the 2nd of February, 2023, after five days of trial in Edinburgh, the jury found Andrew guilty of double murders and rapes. The hearing chief of the jury, Judge Lord Beckett, gave him a sentence of 36 years. Benny Lynn's family also flew to Scotland to hear this trial. Now, after the sentence has been passed by the court, there are mixed opinions among people considering the nature of the punishment. Some people think that a simple imprisonment is not right for the people like Andrew, as it puts more people's lives in danger. Their sentiments are based on the comments made by Andrew before the jury, that he had killed Benny Lynn under the influence of steroids because he was internally dealing with anger and betrayal as Benny Lynn resembled two of the women whom he had dated earlier and who betrayed him, so he inflicted his revenge on her. Police accounts also verify that he was planning this for a long time, as they recovered a spreadsheet containing all the data on women in their mid-twenties and young children. On that, they had found Benny Lynn's name as well. Furthermore, they also found that Andrew had searched for what chloroform is used for, underfloor storage units. 
This explains that the notion of revenge was in his mind for a long time until he found poor Benilin who seemed vulnerable. This case highlights that one needs to be very careful about online interactions because even appearances can be deceptive. Well, that's all from this case. What do you think about this case? Tell us in the comments. Also, if you feel that this case was an intriguing one, like this video and share it with all your friends. Also, subscribe to our AF Crime channel for finding more shocking tales around the world. And if you have any criminal case that you'd like me to investigate, share it in the comment section below.